Hey, Uvex, money got mech, money got log, pocket got stretch. So when I hear bills, I ain't got stress. Roll out and fish up, cause it is got set. You got the first row, but I got the next. Hey guys, uh welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today, I'll be doing a QA. Yes. So I asked everyone to send me questions on Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook. Oh, also Snapchat. So I have a few questions and I tried not to get the answers and rehearse them before. I just wanted to just read the questions and just you know, say, mm, all right, and make the answers as real and raw as possible on the video. So let's get into it. So the first question, how did you meet your hussy and who made the first move? Okay, <laughs> so how did I meet him? After I applied for this job, we were called to go to an orientation at the Surapati Teachers College Auditorium. When I went there, there was like 300 applicants at the orientation. So they were basically briefing us on what it's about or whatever, and how the whole thing is going to go. And um, I, only know, I only knew like two people there, and he's from Burbies, and he never lived in Georgetown, so he don't know anybody at the um, orientation. He didn't know anybody at the orientation. Anyways, we went through the process, we did the aptitude test, and we went into classroom finally. After we went into classroom, um, I created a WhatsApp group for everyone. And so that's how we got everybody's number. So he used to message me on like, he used to come outside of the group and message me and ask me questions about stuff, like classroom stuff, like try to get us to discuss topics together and stuff. And the way how he used to talk to me, it used to make me think like, you know, like, hmm, does this guy like me? But I never wanted to ask the question because I didn't want him to feel like, oh, everybody that talks to me nice, that I think that they like me or whatever, right? So we just used to talk, then we end up start going to buy lunch together. He, he started to get real close to me and he would say things that just used to hurt me. Like I used to be like, oh gosh, I really want to ask this boy if he like me because he gave me signals. Eventually, I decided to ask him and I was like, you say things that make me wonder, you know, like, do you have some kind of feelings for me or something? And he was like, yes. And I took long enough to ask. And then he explained to me the whole thing. So he was telling me how at the orientation, he saw me and he described everything that I wore that day. <laughs> he was interested since from the orientation, but I had no clue. I was really just, and I used to be like, if I had known that a boy had liked me in the class, I would have been less like a tomboy, less talkative and loud and obnoxious as I usually am. But I had no clue, so I just used to be my normal self. And that made me like him a bit, because I was like, you know, if you like me, and I was like, not trying to be anybody for you, or not trying to be this cute girl, girl for you. Then that means you actually like me for who I am. So that made me like him more. And we just started talking and going out and stuff. I just went into it and that's how we ended up being together. <laughs> that's how I found my boo. Okay, so my next question would be, how old am I? I'm 21 and I'll be 22 in August. I know, I look like 16, right? Question, do you experience the stigma that people have against young marriage in your marriage, which is not getting to live your life and have certain experiences as a young woman before marriage? Yes, yeah, sometimes like people, like when I tell people my age or we're having a conversation or something, they would always say like, you married, you're only 21, but um i don't know i have my own views so i would kind of like give that to them as soon as i i feel that type of vibe i would kind of be like you know i already live my life i feel like i heard and i'm living my best life with, with him you know so i think people just kind of make marriage seem like if it's a bondage like if it's something that is supposed to be bad or a tie down or something and for me that's not what it is so 
when people give me that feeling or I feel like they're giving me that kind of stigma, I just kind of shut it down right away. So yeah, I do experience it sometimes, but it, my reaction to it makes people understand that I'm not interested in what they have to say. Next question. If you had to pick between Trinidad and Guyana, which country would you say you love the most and why? This is a hard question. Why? How y'all gonna ask me something like that? No, I love Guyana. Guyana is my home. That's where I'm from. That's where I'm birthed. That's my culture. So I love Guyana the most. That's where my roots are. What businesses do you think women should invest in? Um, I think women should invest in whatever business they feel comfortable investing in. Whatever you are good at, whatever you feel is your passion, that's what you should invest in and go for it. When you do something you're comfortable with and something that you're passionate about, that's when you're confident and most powerful and that's when you thrive the most. So that's what I think women should invest in, whatever you feel is, is good for you. Next question would be, what keeps you going when things get tough? I feel like I've, I feel like I've come to a sort of understanding with life. You have happiness and you have sadness in life. You have success stories and you have failures. And that's the way how it goes, that's life. It's not always going to be good and you have to use however you use your situation and whatever you take it to be and turn it around to be, that's what it's going to be. I just have that understanding. I don't know. It's not, it's not a person or it's not a specific thing that keeps me going. It's just my understanding of how life works. It's a cycle of life. Things get tough and you got to, you got to. How are things going to get better if you don't push? How different was your life one year ago? Girl, let me tell you. One year ago, I just moved in to my first apartment on my own. With my boyfriend, now my husband. <laughs> I had just moved in with him. And at that point, I had just started receiving a salary. I just got checked out. Just finished my training. And my husband, my husband was still training. So we had to be disciplined. Like I couldn't go buying this, buying that. I had to focus on what was important and get stuff done. Anyways, coming down to like February, March time, things started getting better because we were saving and trying to, you know, but I felt like at, at the early parts of the year, we were having so much setbacks. Like the year, last year was crazy. Last year was crazy. It was filled with so much good and so much bad. But I feel like it was my year of learning. Like I learned so much in last year. One year ago, I was lost. I was now trying to find myself, find a place, be on my own. It was hard, but look at where I am now. And I'm grateful. How do you balance everything you do? Girl, sometimes I, I, that's a question I have for me, you know? <laughs> sometimes I wonder like, how do I do it? I don't wanna go ahead saying like, you know, talking like I'm some kind of superhuman or I, you know, I have it all together because I don't, I don't. Recently, I've been out of it. Like I am working and then I have my business on the side and I try to do deliveries at least twice every week. So that is tiring sometimes. Like at one point I even got sick because of how I was overworking my body. And there's so much that I want to add to what I'm doing. So I still, I, I still have to try to get a way to balance everything that I'm doing. I'm still working on that, but um for now i just try to motivate myself and every time i feel like i'm getting lazy or i'm losing focus i kind of pep talk myself and say like you know you know what you're doing this for you know what's the outcome so just push just push. question 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 how would you deal with life if you got up one morning and the love of your life no longer loves you
when I lose somebody or when things don't go exactly how I planned it in terms of relationships or friendships or things like that, it's not like I'm losing a big part of me. I don't make my life and my happiness dependent on another person. They add to it, yeah, but my happiness and the way I feel about myself isn't dependent on another person. So I don't feel personally, you know, I don't feel like losing the love of my life would be like something that would have me all cooped up and going all crazy. That might motivate me. Things, weird things motivate me. That might probably motivate me. So I don't know. Where do I see myself in 10 years? comfortable and happy and at peace how or what caused you to remain strong after so many people came after you two things i stopped feeding into negativity i stopped giving negative things power over me and i started to exert more of a positive light and think positive in certain situations instead of running to just react to all the negative things i started to find something positive to counteract that that negative situation also islam helped me so much in being strong through a lot Times of things. you're going like people are going to tempt you things are people are going to do things that upset you and make you feel like you want to react negatively to them and like you know you want to break down or feel like you're going to lose yourself but when i sit and i think how hard i work for how hard how much effort i put into where i am now and where i wanted to be then i can't give i can't throw all that away just to you know give in to some some stupid negative situation it's getting spicy up in here because the next question is, how do you feel about your first love? <laughs> Sis, I was married a virgin, okay? My husband is my first love. And I love him. I love him. I know you wasn't expecting that. <laughs> what was your hardest relationship and how did you get out of it? All right. My hardest relationship was my previous relationship before I met my husband. And I won't call names because I know your mom knows who. But I won't call no names. Anyways. How did I get out of it? I changed my mindset. I'm not asking for somebody to be perfect. But you got to meet me halfway. And if you can't do that, then bum. I won't die. You got to start letting men know that they're just not trying hard enough. And you're worth the try. You're worth the effort. No excuses. Don't we tolerate an excuses in 2020, okay? Get with it or get lost. What would you advise to young girls who like to be involved with people's man? Live your best life, poo. Period. Just stay away from mine. <laughs> so that brings me to the end of my Q&A. Thank you guys for asking so much questions. I really enjoyed answering the questions. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Watch out for my next video coming soon.